Um, all right, man. Well, take me back. Tell me your baseball story from you know when you're a little guy, you know, high school. I know you played college ball as well, and then into professional baseball. Yeah, I mean, like I guess everybody, I started playing as young as I can remember. I think I started playing t-ball like four years old, and um, literally remember at four telling my parents that I was gonna, I was at my grandma's house and told them I was gonna play in the big leagues, wow. and never swayed from that you yeah. know from four <laughs> until 40 you know that's that's what i was gonna do and um you know like everybody i played little league all the way up through high school uh, but i was like a three sport athlete in high school so okay. i played baseball when it's baseball season you know i didn't do the stuff like kids are doing today and yeah. you know like training at a place like ours um, as soon as you know I, I wrestled for a long time as well and so once wrestling season was over, that was in the winter, Yeah, it was time to play baseball. And then that's the first time I picked up a ball, picked up my glove, wow. you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, which is kind of unheard of these days. You're, For sure. You've yeah. got to like, and to the extent uh, you guys are really good at, <laughs> at lower levels now in yeah. high school. I mean, you got these guys, we trained some of them and it's just unbelievable how good they are at, at that age. Yeah. Um, and they're training all year round, but you know, that's just not what I did. So I think that's why I kind of was a little bit of a late bloomer to where I wanted to play baseball. Um, but I just enjoyed my high school years. I like enjoyed yeah. playing everything. And I think that's kind of lacking, uh, with kids today where they, you know, they pick one sport by the time they're 12 yep. and then that's all they do. And, uh, you know, the way I see it is you're supposed to have fun when you're younger and, baseball shouldn't feel like a job yeah you know no chance it starts feeling like a job it's it's time to shut it down <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah so i you know i wasn't the greatest player in high school i was good for my area you know i grew yeah. up in a small town in pennsylvania we had i think about 800 people when when i was there when i was younger i think they're up to like 900 now oh, so, wow. yeah, so yeah growing a lot in yeah. the last <laughs> 40 years but uh yeah so real small town um and didn't really get recruited out of high school. I had like an offer to go to Liberty University. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar am, with yeah, Liberty. Yeah. But I went down there for a visit and I was like, this is Lynchburg? For me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like very Christian. Yeah. A lot of rules. Yep. Um, and I'm not a big rules guy. So <laughs> I know I would not have done well there. I went down and my, with my parents and after after we left i was just like i looked at both of them like i can't go here yeah yeah like you yeah. can't listen to any music other than classical or christian music oh geez and I was just like ah, that's yeah that, that's that, that ain't me a, yeah, 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 yeah i'm gonna struggle with <laughs> yeah. that uh so didn't go there and i ended up talking to a guy with like the scouting bureau um because i made a couple of like legion all-star teams and went you know as far as you can go in in pennsylvania to like the east west all-star game mm -hmm. um and he told me, hey, I don't think you'll get drafted this year, but you're really close. I would, you know, have you consider going to junior college. So I actually went to uh, Allegheny Community College in Maryland okay. uh, for two years. And the plan with going there was I wanted to get drafted after my freshman year. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I went there, pl didn't play a lot, but played enough to where I impressed a few scouts and I ended up getting drafted my freshman year by the by the Texas Rangers. Um, they were offering me about like three grand, I think, to okay. sign. And like, I think it was, I think it was the 26th round. Yeah. Um, so not a lot of money. And I was just like, ah, you know what? I, I'm not gonna go for, for that amount. Yeah. I just wouldn't be able to live and afford anything. Yeah. Uh, so I ended up uh, going back to school. I had a better year my sophomore year, but did not get drafted. So that was a little bit of a shock for me and then transferred to Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. Had a great year there and got drafted by the Pirates out of there. Okay. Um, convenient for them. They could yeah, come right. watch yeah, me. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's easy. Yeah, they yeah. were pretty much at all my Lo games. Local so, boy, too. I mean, that's got to be awesome being a Pennsylvania yeah, guy. Yeah, it was great. You know, obviously, as you know, getting drafted and playing professional baseball is awesome. Yeah. But when you get drafted by your, your hometown team and team you grew up rooting for it makes yeah. it you know that much more special um you know went through the minor leagues I, I got drafted in the 18th round so i wasn't like a huge prospect or anything but 
had the right people that liked me in the organization yeah. and a lot of times that's what it takes yeah you know? for sure uh, everybody's got to kind of catch their break if you're going to make it to the big leagues and I had the right people that liked me in the organization um, kind of bounced back and forth starting relieving through most of my career in the minor leagues but in 2000 that was the first year that they gave me where I started like the entire season uh, started out in Lynchburg Virginia so I yep you know went back to the yeah, whole Liberty area exactly. yeah. I was like why am I meant to be in Lynchburg there's, there's something weird going on here uh, but yeah, I had a great year there. Um, I think I was there for about half the season. Then okay. I got called up to Double A. Didn't have the greatest. Uh, the, was it Altoona? Yeah, it was okay. Altoona, yeah, yeah. and that's like an hour, like maybe an hour and a half from my hometown. As oh, well. that's that's awesome. So every time I pitched, like stands were full, of yeah. friends, yeah, family, that's freaking like, sweet. It was awesome. Uh, and one of the funny things about that year is. The Pirates organization wanted me to throw a curveball. They didn't. I had like a pretty good slider, and it was yeah. my out pitch. Uh, and you know, pitching coordinators and no, oh, yeah, no, I minor know. league guys, yeah. they'll they'll take something away from you, or they'll say, "Hey, you got to throw this many changeups, or you got to do this, or you got to do that." And they told me I could not throw my slider. They said, "We don't want you throwing your slider. We know it's a good pitch. It's a big league pitch." but we want you to work on a curveball. So when I was in high A, that was fine. I was yeah. getting, still getting people out. Um, uh, not a lot of strikeouts because I just didn't have that slider. And then I got to double A and kind of struggled in my first couple starts because I just didn't have an out Yeah, pitch. no, of course. Yeah, they took away your best pitch. Yeah, exactly. And then finally they go, okay, well, now you can throw your slider. I'm like, well, I haven't thrown it the entire season, so now it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I'm trying to no throw feel, it. no command. Like, yeah, what do you want? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I pitched all right. I think I got ten starts. Uh, the last came down to the last game of the season, where we, if we win, we make the playoffs. If we lose, we're out. We're done yeah. for the year. And just so happened because it was that kind of game, and I was pitching. Like all the front office was in the stands. Uh, Cam Bonifay was the general manager for the Pirates at the time. Um, he, you know, I, I came out in that game and I struck out like the first 11 of 12 oh batters my I gosh, faced. Jeez. So it was like the perfect time. Yeah, to yeah, do for that. sure. Yeah. Uh, and it was, I was, had to be put on the roster that off season. Okay. So we end up losing the game like one nothing on an air in like the bottom of the ninth or the top oh, of the ninth or something yeah. like that. Uh, so heartbreaking loss, but at the same time, it was good for me personally, just because I had that performance yeah, of with everybody there and got put on the 40 man, uh, that off season. And then going into my first big league camp, uh, they had like this, I guess it was like a mini camp in January. Okay. Like winter training. development type thing. Yeah. Okay. Like where all the, everybody on the 40 man, all yeah. the big league guys go down to Bradenton. Okay. Uh, just kind of get away for like a week and throw and field and do all, yeah. you know, everything before spring training, just to kind of see where you're at. Uh, and on the way home, I was flying back to Pittsburgh and Lloyd McClendon, who was the manager, he was also on the same flight. And he, oh, was, cool. he asked me on the plane, he said, Hey, what, like, what are your goals for this upcoming season? And I said, well, my first goal is to make your team out of spring training. Yeah. And he was just like, what? Like, <laughs> first year on the roster yeah. you think you're just gonna like make the big league team yeah and i honestly did yeah you know? of course, I, yeah. And i had that confidence how where, old were you at the time uh i was 23 yeah so that's yeah for sure yeah. which crazy. which it was different back then because now 23 is like whatever but when we we're 23 it was like oh you're you're advanced if you're in double or triple a yeah yeah no doubt and um I went into spring training and some things happened where a couple guys got hurt and yeah. a couple starters got hurt and lo and behold i made the team yeah, out of spring training awesome. in my first my first big league camp so and again the team you grew up rooting for too exactly. which is like so cool exactly and i was so pumped um you know obviously telling my parents and uh, my wife at the time and like all my friends and then uh i had like big plans that night i was gonna I got a case of beer 
I got Taco Bell, <laughs> and I think there was a wrestling pay per view. Yeah, there you go. I was gonna, I was gonna go home, like drink some beer, watch wrestling. So I ate my tacos, and I remember they were like Taco Supreme, yeah. that had like the sour cream on them yep. or whatever. And I go, you know, probably like four or five hours later, I go to flip on like the pay per view and crack open a beer, and I'm just like, oh man, I do not feel good. <laughs> threw up the entire night with oh, food poisoning God. Oh, God. so so that that's your memory of <laughs> yeah yeah for, first Making night is a big league exactly. or so to speak yeah gosh yeah it was crazy uh and then of course i come into the clubhouse the next day and i'm telling the trainers like oh my god i was up all night like, yeah. throwing up i felt so sick i think i had food poisoning from like taco bell and they're yeah. just like yeah. yeah right man you, you drank too much that's i said i did not drink i wanted to drink too much and i didn't get a chance i still have like a 30 pack and it's yeah. freaking one, taco bell yeah so i i literally have not had taco bell since oh really yeah. okay yeah, i believe so that it. was like 20 years ago yeah, yeah yeah that's funny uh but you know spent three years in the big leagues with the pirates three straight seasons um and then how was the team during that time Oh, we were not good. We lost okay. 100 games in 2001. Oh, okay. yeah. That was the first year of PNC Park. Okay. Uh, so, in my opinion, the greatest, uh, the best looking field really? uh, in all the big leagues. Yeah. yeah. Just, you know, you have the city in the background, yep. the bridges. Yeah. It's beautiful um, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. I wouldn't say it's my, I wouldn't say it's my favorite. I, I'm just a huge fan of like Wrigley Field and oh, the atmosphere course, yeah. there. Uh, but as far as like aesthetics and the way everything looks, uh, I would say PNC's yeah, definitely pretty the best. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> um, but opening up that ballpark was just you know it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, just obviously being a pirate fan and then going to games at Three River Stadium. Yeah. You know, just those cookie cutter. I know those same know, way. Yeah. The uh, Astro Turf. Yep. Um, and I actually got to play on that field when I was in high school. So. Okay. I had already played there, and I was like, oh, the new place is going to be awesome. Yep. And it was. Uh, but our teams, those first three years, were just not good. I, I feel like we should have been better than we were, and for whatever reason, we were Who was on the team? Um, you know, bigger guys. We had uh, Jason Kendall, okay. the catcher. Yeah, local guy, Torrance uh, guy. Yeah. We had Brian Giles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good. I mean, good really players. Good. Yeah. I mean, he was he – was, hitting 30 40 home runs every year uh we had kevin young at first base and i, I always laugh because back then you know first basemen were hitting freaking like 40 50 yeah. 60 home yeah, runs exactly. every year yeah. and so kevin would hit 20 25 and he'd get booed like every <laughs> single day because they just they thought he was making too much money to only hit 25 yeah. home runs now 25 home runs is a lot again, yeah it's legit you know? again yeah uh, everybody isn't all juiced up and yeah. just that's and that was another thing like playing in that era was i didn't realize like how many guys were like using steroids yes yeah. it was insane yep. so i'd throw like a i remember pitching against uh miguel tejada and when he was with the a's and i was starting this game and i threw a change up that was like this high off the ground like 2-0 change yeah. up he reaches out fold out on his front leg and then just goes and crushes it to center field for a home run and i was like on the mound i'm like am i am i good enough to play in this league like if that can't get somebody yeah, exactly. out like, exactly what am i 2-0. supposed to yeah, do yeah yeah 2-0 not god oh my god and i always say like once uh guys started getting tested my sinker down and away started becoming a good pitch yeah and like my stats were really good after that yep so you know guys couldn't like muscle that pitch into the outfield they hit it break their bat or yeah. hit it on the ground and um so i started having success once that happened and uh, that was that was nice but uh you know i spent those first three years in pittsburgh and then going into 2004 i was uh i was it was my first year of arbitration so uh, didn't go through the arbitration process, but I, you know, I signed before like, arbitration or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and then went into spring training and jacked up my back. Uh, ended up trying to rush back from that when I shouldn't have. I should have like taken my time. 
uh, but I pitched a little bit spring training just because I wanted to get ready for opening day. That of course, was like yeah. my thing where yeah. I should have just like t- taken the time to... Yeah, taking two, three extra weeks. Or yeah, exactly, needed. until I felt like 100%. Um, and then because of that, and I didn't pitch well that spring, I ended up getting released uh, like a day or two before the season started because they, when you sign like an arbitration contract, they can release you up until a certain point and they only have to pay like a quarter of the contract. Oh, wow. Okay, I didn't know so, that. Uh, yeah, I think it's still like that arbitration contracts aren't guaranteed. Okay. So uh, they released me, only had to pay a quarter, and then they had two like rookies basically that they were going to pay both the minimum yep. and they were going to pay them as much as they were would have paid yep. just me. So good decision by then by them because I ended up uh, you know I get get released, I signed with the Twins, and I'm you know I'm talking with them. They said well. We'll just have you go to AAA for, you know, a couple of weeks until you're ready. And then we'll call you up to the big league team. Um, and I'd never gone, I'd never been in AAA before because, you know, oh, like right. we hey, talked about right. earlier. Went, big yeah. Leagues, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I go to AAA and I'm oh, too good to be in AAA. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been in the big leagues for three years. And Is I there a there. more bitter level than oh, AAA? Was, I mean, gosh. It was bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I learned from that. Uh, later on in my career because I made you know numerous stops in AAA after that uh, but you know that year I just just thought I was too good for that and yeah. uh, I ended up going to AAA and just getting my brains beat in yeah. the entire season yeah. so it was one of those things where uh, I had a pitching coach who wanted to change all of these things and in the long run it ended up working out I changed my arm action a little bit uh, I was like real long and had like a wrap back here um and i changed it shortened it up a little bit and that's kind of what i kept the rest of my career after yeah. that but that season was just hard you yeah. know trying to make those adjustments in the middle of the season and it like i i mean i was bad like when i say like i got my brains beat in that's no exaggeration <laughs> ex- exaggeration uh i i think the, it took me the last game of the triple a season in August, I threw a scoreless inning and got my ERA under a seven. Oh, and that was in like 50 games. Oh, wow. Something like okay, that. So yeah. it was like, yeah. it was bad. I yeah. was getting blasted like every single night. Um, and then I just decided, you know, great learning experience for myself. I just went back to having fun. Yeah. You know, and believe it or not, that last month I actually pitched really well, or I probably would have had like a nine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the season and then they called me up in September okay uh, so that ended up kind of being a little bit of a surprise because I just didn't pitch well you know through the yeah. whole through the whole season but and if you were going good at the time I'm sure they looked at a 30-day split and like hey he's got a two and a half the last yeah. 10 outings so exactly and then I went up and I pitched in I think three games pitched like an inning in two-thirds gave up like eight runs <laughs> like just <laughs> not good uh, a year couldn't end ended quick enough. Oh my god, it was it was so bad. <laughs> I and, know the feeling. Yeah, and definitely the worst baseball experience of my life. Uh, I just it made me hate the city of Rochester. You know, yeah. I was in Rochester, yeah, yeah, exactly. New York. Yep. I think the first day I got to Rochester, uh, my car got broken into, oh, gosh. and they stole like a bunch of stuff out of it, and. Uh, I ended up like I had it in a parking garage and I pull out of the parking garage while I was trying to like flag a cop down. I'm like waving at a cop and a cop just keeps going, doesn't stop. Uh, so then I pull out of the parking garage and the cop pulls me over because it's all like the yeah. windows broken. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> oh and then, you know, I told them what happened and I had already called like the police station and like reported it and all yeah. that. Um, and then he went and checked and was like, oh, okay, yeah, I guess you're telling the truth. And he said, oh, okay, well, welcome to New York. And I was just like, Ugh. Yeah, exactly. Hey, thanks, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You freaking jerk. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, great learning experience. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. It was just a bad year all around. Yeah. And then signed with the Devil Rays uh, the next season. And, you know, I, I had a pitching coach there that really changed my – whole career around Uh, what was his his name name was joe coleman okay so you know like we were talking earlier you have those pitching coaches that would just like mention something or say something with no like 
reason just yeah. because they felt like that's what you should do and you know talking to my friends who are in who are coaches now in different organizations like that's not even allowed yeah. you can't even without going through like the gm or the you know you got to go through this chain of command to even change something on one of your players uh, so I know a lot of like buddies of mine that have been pitching coaches in organizations now. They just don't enjoy it because they don't really do anything. Yeah, they just relay what everyone else says, and they they're inter- they're don't really get to right? exactly. Sense. Yeah, they don't get to really have their hand on anybody or, or help them and use their experience. Um, but this guy, Joe Coleman, uh, I, I was in. So I went to big league camp, got sent down. Um, I think one of the first cuts, so that was like a little surprising because I yeah. was pitching really well. But I also asked for number ninety-seven. Um, <laughs> reason being, my oldest son Drew was born in nineteen ninety-seven, oh, cool. so I wanted a I wanted a unique number and a number where no matter where I went and played, I knew I'd be able to get that yeah, number. Yeah. You know, and up until then, I was like I think I was fifty-three when I came up with the Pirates. Okay. Um, you know, I always like 32, but obviously, you know, with the Dodgers, you can't yeah, be 32. No, no. So I knew uh, 97 was pretty much going to be available yeah, anywhere yeah. I went. Um, I like it. I never knew that. That's that's yeah. cool. And I I think you're the only guy that's ever worn 97 in the big leagues. I'm I pretty, am. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Although with guys like the Yankees, the amount of people that, that you know, numbers they're retiring. Yeah, exactly. Right? Eventually yeah, yeah. somebody's yeah. going to have to wear 97. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna have triple digits with them yeah. uh, in the next probably ten or fifteen years, but yeah. So I was number ninety-seven. So I think they thought I was like one of the just you know guys that weren't gonna be there long. Yeah, yeah, and Lou exactly. Pinello was the manager. Oh, geez, so yeah, he super me, old school. Yeah, oh, yeah. He sent me down, um, and I went to Triple A, and that's where I had Joe Coleman as a pitching coach, and he he suggested, you know. It, we were probably a month in the season and I was pitching all right. It wasn't like lights out or anything. And he suggested that, you know, when I came to the top of my leg lift, I do like this little turn. Uh, and basically the way he explained it was he thought it would help me time up a little better. My timing would be better at like foot plant mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, just give me a little extra to hide the ball one, but then also get, you know, get my hips to turn yeah. right at the end with, you know, have that counter rotation and then rotate, you know, down the mound a little yep. better. And I was like, all right, well, I'll try it tonight when yeah. I pitch. Yeah. You know, I did it in and the flat ground. You were a reliever at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. reliever only. Um, and so I get in the game that night and I do it and I like, dominated yeah. ever since. Yeah. You know, I yeah. started doing yeah. it and whatever changed, uh, and it could have been a confidence thing. Um, you know, I do think I've, was hiding the ball a little For better sure. and guys yeah. weren't seeing it out of the glove you know you always hear uh, position players talk where if you see a guy take the ball out of the glove and you can follow it out of their hand it just gives you more time to yep. like see the ball and, yeah uh, you know they weren't able to do that so it, it worked yeah <laughs> you know, yes, it's one it of those did. things yeah. where he probably just it was something that popped in his head and he mentioned it to me and i did it and it worked and i had success you know the rest of my career doing that um, and I, you know, I was up and down that year uh, a bunch of times. Uh, actually, when I first got called up, funny story is we were in Chicago playing the White Sox. And, you know, I come into the game, get three outs, whatever. And uh, we're getting on the plane, and I can't remember who the bench coach was at that time. But he says, hey, Joe, come here, come here. I'm like, hey, what's, what's up? He's like, He's like, hey, just let you know we save like the lineup card for you. I was like, oh, all right, cool. He's like, for what? <laughs> like, it was my first game with the Devil Rays or something. He's like, he's like, well, you know, for a little memento to, for you to keep. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I was like, but like, seriously though, for what? <laughs> like, did I reach a milestone or something? Like, it's like, oh, that that wasn't your first game you ever pitched in the big leagues. I'm like. What? Oh but I, that's like uh, a couple hundred. Yeah, I think, exactly. You know? Nice recon, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I was like, oh, he's like, oh, wow. I thought I thought that was your uh, first game <laughs> debut. Like, no, 
and I, <laughs> I'm like, it has to be 97. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's classic. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you got Lou Pinella, who he, he didn't know my name. Uh, he called me Beemel, which a lot of people call me Beemel, but, you know, you'd think maybe the manager. Yeah, would, exactly. Uh, of your, of your own Kendall, club. Jason yeah. Kendall called me Beemel, and if I saw him walking out here, he'd probably stop and call me Beemel as yeah. well. Uh, but he just did it kind of to be a dick. Yeah, that sounds you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> and Lou just had no idea. Uh, and then I, I played with another guy who, uh, with the Rays, Rob Bell. He actually lived oh, yeah. in the same neighborhood as Lou. Okay. And he started, he was a starting pitcher for Lou on the Devil Rays. And in the off season, Lou was like out in his yard or whatever. So Rob stopped and was talking to him. And he literally had no idea who he was. <laughs> He's like, "Oh yeah, I think one of my, uh, I think one of my players lives in this neighborhood." And he's like, "Yeah, it's me, Lou. I made twenty starts for you last year." And he had zero idea uh, that it was, was sharing the him. same locker room with you all year, dude. Like, yeah. let's go. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's just the kind of guy he was, but definitely a character. Yeah. Um, and then from there, you know, I. I had a pretty good year with, with the Devil Rays. Uh, loved playing. I had Johnny Gomes as a teammate. He's, okay. You know, one of my favorite humans ever. Yeah. Um, but we kind of fed off each other. That's when I first started. Uh, I was always confident, but that's where, like, Johnny and I would kind of come to the field every day and we'd be on the way to the, to the field in the car and he'd be like, you know what, I'm probably going to hit three homers today. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to go about a month scoreless, not give up any runs. And as you know, in baseball, those these are just things you're not supposed to yeah, say, yeah, course, right? Yeah. The baseball gods will strike you down yeah. and all that. Um, and we just started doing that. And, you know, he would hit three home runs that day. And we'd be like, oh, man, we're on to something. Yeah, you know? exactly. It's like the, the power of... Uh, belief or self-talk yeah. or putting it out in the universe or whatever yeah and uh, i would do the same like i'd go a month not give up a run so it was like that year where i really turned my career around one with the mechanical adjustment but then also mentally just just being on that border of like arrogance yeah you know being and you have cocky, to be being confident dude you have to be you're just you like arrogant once in a while redlining yeah it, you know pretty much every single day um, and then that was just another thing that I kept kind of through my whole career was just that confidence. And, you know, there are days where you feel like shit and you, you go out there and you're just like, all right, I got to get through this. Yeah. Hopefully I can get three outs and, yeah. uh, nothing bad happens. Uh, but you know, for the most part, every time I was on the mound after that, it was like, Hey, I'm going to go out there and these guys have zero chance. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, I, I owe a lot of credit. Uh, obviously, we talked about uh, Joe Coleman for that mechanical adjustment, mm -hmm. but then also just Johnny Gomes. Yeah, you know, for uh, having that, instilling that confidence, and just watching a guy do that, and then back it up every yeah. single day. Yeah, no, he so it was just it was. It he was had fun. some good years, man. He was a good yeah. player. God, he's still the same guy too. Is he? <laughs> You ever see anything like on his social media or whatever he yeah. doesn't post a lot of stuff but it's you'll you'll know what i'm talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah. he's just like hey, yeah 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 i'm awesome yeah two what doubles four rbis yeah. what do you want yeah exactly it's a tuesday uh and then you know kind of the reason we're sitting here today is because i played for the dodgers so yeah. um 2006 i signed with the dodgers uh same thing went to big league camp pitched really well uh, got sent down, um, went to Vegas, it was AAA for a month, and then I got called up after that and then just kind of stayed up in the big leagues for a lot of years after that. But, you know, my first two years with the Dodgers, I I lived in Pasadena, and I didn't, you know, Pasadena was fine enough, it was close to the stadium, um, but I didn't love it. Yeah. So my last... My last year there, I lived in Playa del Rey. Yep. Uh, I was right down the road from you. Yep. And we lived on those in those breakers condos. Yeah. And I was like, 
I am never leaving. I'm never. I'm <laughs> yeah. staying here. I'm not going back to Pittsburgh in the off season. Yeah. I'm like, this I'm, is too awesome. Yeah, I know. And I'm living right on the beach. So, um, you know, I've, I've lived here ever since. Actually, moved to Texas uh, right before all the coronavirus stuff really got crazy. But, um, you know, still have our business here. Yeah. And you know, that's basically the reason. And, yeah. and, you know, I played for a lot of teams after that. I uh, played for the Nationals, the Rockies, went back to the Pirates, um, played for the Mariners for two years. And then every year off season, I come back here. Yep. You know, it's just just a great place to live. Uh, you know, obviously, you just no, look I know. Out we're looking at the beach yeah, right now. We're on exactly. you just Avenue look F. out there. Yeah. And it's, uh, that's what people live here for. Yeah. You know, it's obviously it's expensive. Yeah. Uh, oh my everything's gosh. really expensive here. That was kind of the one nice thing when I moved to Texas, like, uh, you go to breakfast or brunch and you pay like, you know, normal prices. And, yeah. You know, I'd go to brunch here and get the bill and it's like a hundred dollars. And it's like, I had eggs and bacon, yeah, like exactly. and two bloody Mary's what's happening right now. Uh, oh, dude, but it's... you know, it's, it's an awesome place to be an awesome place to live. Um, you know, and it, and talk about that, like living in Playa del Rey, I loved it. Um, and then you had Moe's yeah. right down the street. Yeah. So I, That's uh, how we kind of started getting to know each other through yeah. the Jackals. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kathy Jackals. You yeah. Know, I remember she would always talk about you and say, Hey, you got to meet, you know, one of our friends His name's Keith and plays professional baseball. He's a homeless man's version of you. He's, he's throwing <laughs> 86 and you know. Yeah, I had a lot of years right through 86. Yeah, oh, uh, But, yeah, Velo wasn't as, as long as you could get guys out. Velo yeah. wasn't that important back then. Yeah, uh, it was different for sure. A lot different. But, um, yeah, so she would always talk about you. And she's, to this day, one of my favorite human beings yeah. I've ever met. Yeah, she's know? awesome. Yeah. Obviously gone way too soon. And you know, it makes me and my wife sad that. Yeah, she hasn't gotten to experience, you know, the stuff with her daughters and yeah. kids and, yeah. and no, things I agree. like that. But uh yeah, and I think I think I'm not sure the first time we met I think was actually at Kirlin Job. 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 Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so I had had Tommy John, I think you were That re- was yeah, six months into rehab or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So I ended up finally meeting you after, yeah. you know, all that <laughs> all time and hearing time. about you all the time and then, you know, got to become good friends with the Jackals family yeah. and their kids and yep. you know your dad's awesome yeah uh, by the way you don't know this but my dad was a big fan of yours before you guys met and the whole reason is so like when your son's left-handed you start to identify with every left-handed pitcher especially if they're on the Dodgers yeah. so my dad loved you because you just you'd be sinker away suck on 92 yeah. and it's just ground ball after ground ball but hey you see Bimel's doing really well you know he'd, yeah. he loved you he'd go on and on about oh god Joe looked good last night yeah, you know, that's I'm awesome. born and raised a Dodger fan so I was I was rooting for you guys as well but yeah it was funny that's I mean that went that went back that was way before so it's kind of funny yeah we've had some you know going over to Jack Jackal's house um, I've had some good conversations with your dad over yeah. there yeah. I remember like the first conversation um, him talking about being a big Dodger fan and, yeah. and stuff like that. So, yeah, 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 great guy. Yeah, old old school Dodger family, but you know, it's good. So, so take me through the end of your career. You know, you, you know, it's cool to hear you say that you haven't missed it as much. Yeah. Um, and I think that's like you said, you put it perfectly. A lot of guys don't feel that way. I mean, you know, they they kind of hold on as long as they can. Yeah, um, you know, my my last year with the Mariners, so 2015. I was having like, I had it probably my, so I had Tommy John in 2012. Yep. So we won't skip out on that. Uh, you know, obviously that's when I met you at the at rehab, but uh, um, I came back from that and I pitched in 2013. I signed with the Braves. I went to AAA and it was late in the season. So I, I think I only pitched there for maybe two or three months. Um, but it was just kind of getting that feel back. And, yeah. you know, honestly, like I would, I'd go out and I'd pitch one day, or I wouldn't even pitch. I'd come to the field and I'd play catch. And I'd be like, oh man, this is the day. Like, I feel good. Like, I'm finally getting, you know, past all those ups and downs with Tommy John. Um, Feeling good, feeling like, feeling awful. Uh, So I'd I'd 
come to the field, play catch, and be like, oh, this is the day. Wouldn't get in the game that day. Come to the field the next day, go to play catch, and go, oh, my God, I need surgery again. Yeah, my no, arm's I killing do. me. I know. It's like, what is happening right now? So, D- Did you ever have days when you just couldn't throw the ball anywhere near where you wanted to? Uh, A- after first, Tom, after yeah, Tommy John. Like yeah. the first, dude, I had, an, I had an outing coming out of the pen. Walk a guy, pick him off. Walk a guy, walk a guy. Missile to left center guy makes a circus catch doubles him off second base that was my outing yeah. <laughs> like, like didn't do one thing well yeah. thank god it wasn't five runs but i if you told me to hit hit this van i couldn't hit that van yeah. it, was, it was that bad so yeah i don't think i ever got to where it was i mean my command was definitely off yeah like i was a big command guy yep. uh, so not having that and not throwing you know 95 plus yep. was was tough because you're of course. You know, right in that yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Hitter speed. Uh, but yeah, so I remember like once I got I and honestly I was like pitching that year and just like this might be it. Like, yeah. I can't continue to keep going like this. And uh I ended up at right I mean it was like the day that I got to like sixteen months out of surgery. Yep. It just all Clicked. you know, yep. something switched. Uh and I just started throwing well again. I felt great every day. And unfortunately, it was like with two weeks left in the season. Uh, But, you know, those last two weeks, I I pitched really well. And I was getting, you know, my velo was slowly getting back. I think I was like 86, 87 that whole year. And then started getting back up into, you know, the low 90s. I think I topped like maybe 91 or 92 that year. So, uh, but was able to hit it like every time yeah. you know top out at that yeah every you were game. sitting that around there. um and then you know i was like okay um i'm back like yeah. i can play again next year yep uh so i ended up signing the next year with the mariners and you know i hadn't pitched in the big league since 2011 going up to that point this was 2014 because uh, i i went to spring training with the rangers 2012 uh, completely blew out my arm and had Tommy John that year. So I missed that whole year a uh, little, you know, I think I was just saying in AAA in 2013. So 2014 signed with the Mariners and Lloyd McClendon is a manager. Oh, wow. Same guy that Full circle, know, gave man. me That's my, crazy. my first shot is yeah. now going to give me another shot as an older player. I That's was awesome. 37 at, or, yeah, I think 37 at the time. Um, so, I went up there, uh, signed a minor league deal, but they brought me in to Seattle for a physical, just to make sure everything was all right. Uh, and I talked to Lloyd and he said, hey, like you're gonna make this team. So uh, just go home, do whatever you need to be healthy, come into spring training. If you're healthy, you'll be on the team. Yeah. So it was the greatest spring training of my life <laughs> because I didn't, for once didn't have like that pressure of, yeah. you know, cause usually I had to make the team, yep. you know, when I was with the Dodgers and uh, a couple other teams, I didn't necessarily have to make the team. I was already on the team and I could have, I mean, I did have a couple terrible springs and yeah. still was on the team. But, but you had enough. I mean, they knew you were good at that. Yeah, point. exactly. Yeah. Um, but that was very rare for me as a player. You know, I usually had to make the team in my spot, whatever. Yeah. Uh, so that year to hear that, just took all the pressure off. I went in spring training, had fun. And, you know, usually spring training, uh, if you're not pitching and you're playing a team that you play during the season, you've got to stick around for like five innings. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of well known in baseball yep. that, that that's what happens. And the first game, I'm walking out to the dugout to just watch the game for five innings. And Lloyd and uh, the bench coach, uh, call me over and they're like, hey, what are you doing out here? I'm like, oh, I'm just going to watch, you know, five innings. They're like, Shh, you don't need to do that. Go ahead. You can get going. You don't need to come out here for I five innings. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, seriously? But I was the only one they let do that because I was, you know, I was 37 at yeah, the time. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oldest player on the team. But um, and I was like, oh, my God, this is freaking awesome. Yeah. So I – it was so easy that year. I just, if I pitched, I stuck around for the game, pitched, yeah. went home. If I wasn't pitching that day, I just got my work in, did all the PFPs and yep. all, worked out and did all that. And I went home and 
made the team out of spring training, had probably my best year, you know, between there and uh, had some good years with the Dodgers. Yep. I had like a 2.02 and 71 games uh, in 2008. Yep. And then, you know, the year in, in uh, Seattle in 2014 was very similar. May have been a little bit better, you know, with the peripheral stats and stuff like that. Uh, but, yeah, so I had a great year then. Went into the off season and wanted to re-sign with Seattle and uh, just wasn't wasn't working out, wasn't happening. We were, weren't close on, like, the contract and stuff like that. So I ended up waiting, and, you know, I had it, that was kind of my thing. I had, like, signed late in spring training probably, like, four times yeah. as a free agent where I'd sign like the middle of March yep. games were already going on yep. and I'd go in pitch a few times and make the team yeah. and, you know it was pretty <laughs> not good. a bad deal yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it wasn't bad it wasn't bad <laughs> if at all. you know it's coming if you're not sure you're like this sucks That's... yeah exactly um so I signed with the Rangers again and go into there I signed like a big league deal but it, I signed a non-guaranteed contract which those exist as well and then I pitched I think three times and they released me. Uh, I think you Darvish ended up getting hurt that year. Yeah, and, he, did. he had Tommy John around that time. Yeah, and they wanted they wanted to fill the roster spot with somebody who would go like multiple innings or yeah. could spot start or yep. whatever. So they were like, we don't have the luxury of having like a, a lefty one out guy. And I'm like, you get righties out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like who exactly. keeps telling you guys yeah, this stuff? Yeah, yeah. Like, You'd sink her away. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. Uh, but then, so I get released by them and then re-sign again with the, the Mariners. Um, and was having like a great year there. And then uh, actually there was a day where, it was one of those days where, you know, if I can't pitch, I learned early on in my career, like go in, tell the manager, like, hey, I need a day. Yeah. Right? So I always... Uh, when I first came up, I wouldn't. I would never say I couldn't pitch. I was like, always can pitch. I yeah. can always throw. End up throwing five, five, six days in a row. You know, stuff like that would happen. Um, and then soon after, you'd watch your stats. Yeah, get yeah, terrible absolutely. Because yeah. you get tired. Yeah, and, you're cooked. Uh, yeah, so I I made a rule for myself. I would never throw more than three days in a row. Yeah. Um, if I threw three days in a row, I would go tell the manager that I needed a day off and uh or if i was just like done yeah you know, if i yeah, pitch maybe 10 games out of you know 15 or something and needed a break i'd go and tell a manager like hey i can't go tonight um and i ended up doing that one day we were playing the rangers in seattle and um a younger lefty was out there and i'm just sitting in the bullpen thinking like i'm down today you know yeah. i always wore my cleats just in case something happened uh but you know i'm just out there relaxed and like i'm not gonna pitch and the kid gets in trouble and i think it was just me and like the closer left and they call down and they're like hey get joe going and i'm like what like i told him i can't go today like why yeah. am i getting up so i was pissed and i get up and i'm like oh, i'll probably just throw a few and he'll get out of it yeah <clears throat> well he gives up like eight runs and hasn't oh, gotten an out oh jeez! and so next thing i know and i'm barely loose you know yeah i can barely get the ball to the plate it's like <laughs> floating in there i'm like oh my god this feels terrible and i look out and manager's walking to the mound and i'm like oh my god he's gonna put me in right here oh my like I, after i said i could yeah, yeah, exactly. go. yeah yeah so i end up going out and i think i give up a home run to prince fielder throw a slider and he hits it the other way for home. The guy just had ridiculous yeah. power. Uh, it's like, who who does that? Like, yeah, who can hit right. a slider <laughs> oppo? Exactly, lefty-lefty yeah. slider, yeah, yeah. Um, so he hits a homer, and then I think I give up a double, um, give up a couple runs, and then I get, like, loud outs, like, yeah. where I'm, like, ducking, and the center fielder's, like, <laughs> catching it. I'm like, jeez. Uh, so it was, was not good. I was pretty upset about it. Um, one, just because that had never happened to me in my career where I said I couldn't pitch. And yeah. I mean, I literally like was struggling just to get the ball there. Yeah. And yeah, you knew you didn't have it that day. Like yeah. you'd, you'd been yeah. gassed yeah. and ended up getting hurt. So that was the worst part about it. Oh, so I geez. came in the next day 
and I'm getting a bunch of treatment on my arm and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to let this, like, I'm not hurt. Yeah. I'm going to keep going out there and dump, freaking dumbass, yeah. <laughs> hard headed. <Yeah. laughs> just so dumb for me to do that and not say anything. And then, uh, I went like a two week period where I pitched, I don't know how many times, but I only pitched like an inning and two thirds and okay. gave up like 12 runs, I think. Oh, geez. 12 run runs. I think I gave up like six homers. Oh, geez. So the last straw was I was in, we were in Texas. I gave up three home runs in one inning. And then I came out of the game. Is a reliever they're leaving you in for three home? Yeah. Like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. This is before the three batter rule. It's not like right. they had to keep you in. That's yeah. crazy. So then I come out and I'm like, all right, I'm hurt. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I got to go on the DL. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so as as you know, like, you're a reliever and you you give up 12 runs in and yeah. two-thirds. You can kiss your season Yeah, yeah I was goodbye. about to say, your season's done, yeah. Um, but I ended up, so I went on the DL, came back pitched well the rest of the year after that so i basically had a two-week span where i was just garbage yeah and uh i ended up remember remember this vividly and it ends up being it was my last big league game uh i was pitching against the a's i think i threw two innings so i was coming off like the last got the last out and i looked back at the scoreboard and it had my name there and it said my ERA was a 3.99. And I was like, yeah, I got that shit under a four. I was so pumped. I was like, because when, when I was growing up, if you are if you pitched a full season and you had under a four, that was, was a, a good year. damn good yes. year. Yeah. Yes, now, that, man. That's not necessarily true anymore. Uh, but, you know, I was so proud of that because yeah. I know how bad and how, I mean, I was up in like maybe the fives or sixes. Yeah. Um, after you know that two week span and then to be able to bring that and get that down under a four i was like so pumped and not thinking that would ever be like my last big league game yeah. either because i thought well i had a pretty good year yeah going to 2016 and nobody will sign me you know yes. and i'm 39 at the time um then you're healthy right that's oh, healthy yeah, yeah yeah like i had that you know my shoulder was bothering me a little bit 2015 when i went on the dl um, but came back from that and pitched well and actually probably threw the hardest I did that whole season the last month in September. So, um, you know, it was just one of those things where I thought, oh, yeah, you know, get another shot. Somebody's yeah. going to sign me. Yeah. Um, I think the Mariners would have, but they ended up getting a new GM. Uh, Lloyd McClendon ended up getting fired. Yeah. And, you know, didn't get re signed there. And then I, I ended up going to driveline in Seattle. So, so it's like April or something like that. And nobody signed me yet. So I was like, I might as well go up there and train, see if I can throw a little harder. Um, and yeah. at that point, driveline wasn't really as big as it is now. No, that's 16, just, right? Yeah. So that's, I mean, yeah. So it was just starting to, you know, they're starting to get a little recognition really that year. Um, and, you know, I went up there and, Ended up throwing for the Marlins. They end up saying, okay, we'll sign you. They, I go down to Florida. Um, and like I, I go down there for my physical. They give me a MRI on my shoulder, elbow, whatever. I come in the next day. Well, I talk to the doctor. He's like, hey, uh, everything looks good. Like, come in tomorrow. You can start throw your first bullpen, whatever. So I come in the next day and I'm, I'm sitting in the locker room or whatever. And they go, hey, the trainer comes in, hey, just hold on. You're not going to throw right away. we got to hear back a couple things from, like, Miami, from the front office and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, okay, no yeah. problem. Uh, so then I'm sitting there, and it's, like, an hour and a half later, and nobody said anything to me. So finally I'm like, what is going <laughs> yeah, on? Exactly. I go into the training room, and I'm like, hey, like, what's happening? And the trainer gets all weird, like, oh, well, I can't, I can't, I can't I know. tell you. Like, I can't say anything. I'm like can't say anything about what yeah. like what are you talking about so at that point i'm starting to get a little worried i'm like shit am i dying or something yeah, I know, like, right yeah find something yeah. in my physical that i don't you know <laughs> i have some disease or something and uh so then finally they call me in the office like hey uh just want to let you know we're and we're not gonna end up signing you and i'm like what like what for what like well you know, you didn't pass your physical. 
said, I mean, I didn't yeah. pass. Like, what, what's going on? Like, you guys are being super weird. They're like, well, you know, you can only get your elbow to like 10 degrees of extension. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. I said, I can probably walk in that clubhouse and grab a bunch of 19 or 20 year olds that are like this. Yeah, they can't exactly. straighten their arm no, at all. For sure. Like, what are you talking about? Why is that even a thing? They're like, well, with that, and we saw, you know, in the MRI, you, you have a couple bone spurs. I'm like, of course I have bone spurs. I'm 39 years old. What did you think you were going to see? Like a 19-year-old elbow? Oh, my like, gosh. I'm so confused with what's yeah. going on. So basically, they failed me on my physical for a bunch of stuff. I ended up finding out uh, later on the reason that they didn't sign me was they had a pitching coordinator, and it was like a pitching coordinator that they ended up, I don't know if you remember, they like traded players for this pitching coordinator oh, no, from no. the Pirates. Okay. And... This guy just hated, like, driving, hated weighted balls. So he was like the guy, you know, older pitchers were coming to the Pirates and having success, and they yeah. were giving credit to, like, uh, Ray Searage, who I had him there in 2011. Great guy, good coach, good motivator. Um, but then there was this other guy, and I, you know, honestly, I can't remember his name right now, but he was totally against all that stuff, and he was getting a lot of the credit, too, for these older players that were yeah. coming in, and he was like, helping them mechanically and maybe he was maybe he wasn't uh but he just hated oh, that's so driving. crazy it was almost like he wanted to get the credit for me yeah going there and if i had any kind of success and then he found out that wasn't gonna oh, happen God. so you they didn't sign me and i because it was the weirdest thing the day before i obviously talked to the doctor and he's like never mentioned any of this yeah so uh, just for it to pop up like that was kind of weird. But now I'm in the situation where, well, now no one's going to sign me because everyone's going to think I'm hurt. Yeah, if you failed, failed a physical. physical. Yeah. Um, so I had to, I was living in Seattle at the time because I was at driveline. Um, so I had to fly. So I was in Florida. I had to fly back to Seattle. Um, I went up there. I got my own MRIs and got like the contrast dye, whatever it's called, injected into my yep. shoulder and my elbow. Feels great. Oh yeah! That's, oh my gosh! Yeah, if you if you're not hurt before that, yeah, yeah, you will exactly, be after. Exactly. Elbows like yeah, this freaking big. I'm like, how am I supposed to get this swing? Yeah, I know. Uh, but yeah, so I, I got that done, and then um, got the results. Flew back down to Florida to see Doctor Andrews. He's the one who did my Tommy John surgery, yep. and basically just wanted him to look at it and write a report like what was going on yeah. if there's nothing wrong then you could write a report give that to teams that were like scared or whatever um so i flew down there and he's like man like your elbow looks really good like that's a really good looking like elbow <laughs> especially for almost 40 years yeah. old so i was like oh okay great so he writes the report everything's fine and like i think a week later i ended up signing with the the royals um ended up going down to extended with them for a little bit and didn't really get enough time like to throw because I um, it was a point in extended where they like take that break like, yeah okay. when the season's yep, about yep. to start and they yep. take like a two-week break yeah, or something June, like right that. right when the, everybody's starting to get shipped off yeah and, yeah. yeah so uh, I didn't have much time so I kind of they rushed me and threw me into uh went to Omaha and they like threw me in there right away they wanted to hurry up and see what I could do and get me to Kansas City um but then same thing it like I wasn't ready to pitch yet yeah. uh, I needed like some time to get build up and figured I had that time there they would give it to me um but that ended up not being the case I, I didn't pitch well uh the first couple weeks and then I ended up uh kind of starting to get going and feeling good and strikeouts started going up uh against lefties velo i actually got up to like i think 93 okay 93 or maybe even 94 but i hadn't like thrown that hard in forever yeah so i hadn't thrown that hard since like 2007 i think i i'd hit 95 in 2007 and then yep. never again until i was <laughs> Till two weeks ago yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. uh, but yeah so pitching well and i had a release clause in my contract um you know, for, I think it was July 22nd or something. So I was only there. I only ended up being there for a month. 
Um, it was one of those weird situations where I was pitching really well and it's a day before my release clause where I can opt out of the contract and mm -hmm. become a free agent again, which I was going to do because yeah. I just, I wasn't enjoying like Omaha and travel there was bad, you know, at 39 years old yeah, trying to get on those PCL flights. Or yeah. No fun. Uh, so I end up, uh, the manager wants to talk to me. So I'm thinking, all right, I'm going to get called up. Like, yeah. They know my outs to my release clause is tomorrow and I'm, uh, they have to call me up or, or I can, you know, become a free agent. So I'm walking into the office thinking, thinking like, yeah, here we go. Yeah. They're calling me up and complete change of events. They're like, Hey, we're going to, uh, release you. Like we know your release clause is tomorrow and we're not going to call you up. So we're going to let you go ahead and take your release. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> And then the manager was telling me all this stuff like, oh, yeah, you know, the velocity is just not there. And, you know, with your age, you're, you know, you haven't been pitching well. And I'm like, have you even been watching yeah, the games? Know, right? Like, are you being serious right now? Like, I've been dominating these last. <laughs> I think I went like uh, over the last like two weeks I was there. I think I pitched like eight innings and didn't give up a run. Had oh, like geez, yeah. nine or ten strikeouts. You throw 93, 94 at yeah. that point. God. And I was like. Where are you getting this information? Yeah, exactly, like, right? You're definitely not watching the games. No. Uh, so then, you know, I took that and thinking, well, I've been pitching well, so somebody will sign me. And again, nobody signed me, so I finished that season out. And then, you know, turned 40 the next year. And I was, if I didn't get anything in spring training, I was like, oh, I'm just going to retire. And then my agent at the time said, well, you know what? I think you should try the Atlantic League. I think, you know, nobody signs you go there pitch uh try it out if you don't like it go home yeah, retire yeah. uh, but i think you should just give it that one last shot and see you know see what happens and same thing like velo was up that year i was pitching well um so i went to new britain okay uh in the atlantic yeah <laughs> terrible <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you end up in New Britain? Like no Long Island or Somerset or yeah, one of the think, decent ones? I think it was just my agent at the time had like a connection yeah, with probably. the manager yeah, there. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of so times how it works. Just, you know, he just got me in there and I didn't, you know, a lot of good things happened. Uh, not baseball wise. I ended up having my first host family at 40 years old. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my. So, you know, I signed with New Britain and, Somebody from the front office gets a hold of me and they're like, Hey, yeah, we got you a host family. And I'm like, what? A host family? I said, I don't want a freaking host family. Like, what are you talking about? I'm 40 the years old. Year old yeah. They're like, oh, well, so-and-so lived there last year. I'm like, I don't care if they lived there last year. I was like, I got 13 years yeah, in the big yeah, leagues. Know, like, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting a host family. And then they're like, yeah. You I said, don't you guys have like apartments or something yeah. I can rent or like a connection? They're like, yeah, yeah, we do, but you don't want to. You don't want to live in those places. They're not very safe. I'm like, what? Oh my god! <laughs> like, so I'm like, all right, going, you know, going to host going family. To a host family, and ended up being. We're still really good friends with them. Oh, that's cool. Uh, the Bremers, their their son actually came out here and trained. You know, at Bimo Elite Athletics uh, when we were in El Segundo, he actually lived out here for like a year. Oh, nice. That's cool. Um, and then I just talked to him a couple of days ago, and he's gonna come out. He's still trying to play professionally uh he's a really good like d2 pitcher like nice. one of the top in the in the country but just didn't get an opportunity yeah, to get drafted yeah. and then when he was you know last year when he was ready to possibly i think he played he signed with an indie ball team a couple of years ago drove from connecticut to i don't know somewhere in the middle of the country one of those one of those teams and pitched one game, and then they released him oh, right God, after that's the game. Brutal, man. Uh, so he did pitch in one professional game, but you know, last year he was pretty much ready to play again. And then with everything that yep. happened, he didn't get Shut that down, opportunity. Yeah. So he's going to come to our other location that we have in El Paso, Texas, and going to come out there and train for like a dude. Month that's or crazy. So. That's full circle. Yeah. So that was co cool about it. And then I had some teammates in New Britain who got me into cryptocurrency. So oh, okay. Like Bitcoin <laughs> yeah. and like all these other cryptos. 
and I'm really happy that I got into that <laughs> because it's freaking exploded over this well, past year. Well, and your year. timing was good too, yeah, right? I mean, yeah, back definitely. then. 2000, was this was 2017. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, going into that year, I, you know, I, I was closing for the team and pitching pretty well. I ended up going, there was like a, I had a month period where I went the full month, didn't give up a run, oh, wow. like didn't blow, blow a save and nobody's still like signing me. Yeah. So I was like, man, I don't think this is going to happen. Yeah. If it was going to happen, somebody would have signed yep. me after this sample size, yep. pretty big sample size. And I was, I was aware of like the new age statistics like FIP and uh, which is like the fielding independent Indi pitching yeah, yeah. Uh, where it calculates your ERA, what it would be without luck. Yeah. Uh, it still drives me nuts <laughs> that that's even a thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, striking out a lot of people, not walking anybody, giving up a few hits, but you know, according to FIP, that doesn't matter. Yep. Hits are luck. Yep, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, not giving up home runs either. And so I was, I was doing well. And then well, I just got to this point where it's just like, oh, man, this is, I don't think this is happening. So uh, I ended up finding myself like we'd stretch at three o'clock and I'd show up at like 2.50. Yeah, you there know? you go. That's your sign. And it was yeah. just like, I'm out. I remember listening to Willie Stargell talk uh, when, I, you know, when I was younger in the minor leagues with the Pirates. And he basically said, he knew it was time to shut it down when that started happening with him. Yeah. You know, he wasn't enjoying coming to the clubhouse, uh, loved being around the guys, but just the game of baseball was no longer like that fun. Yeah. And, you know, I found myself doing the same thing. And it was weird for me because I was always a guy that I said, you're going to have to tear the jersey off my yeah. back. Like, I'm not going to know when to quit. Like, yeah. I'm just going to keep going until, like, nobody will let me play anymore. And ended up that wasn't true. Yeah. You know, I I was pitching in a game in Somerset, New Jersey. Uh, I was on the mound, just not pitching well. I ended up giving up like a grand slam to some little slap dick. That, <laughs> I don't even know who he was. You know, that's and, his like career highlight, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, somebody actually contacted me soon after that. It's like, hey, so and so said he owns you, and I'm like. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, he apparently hit a home run off you like last year. I was like, oh yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. Smell you later. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I ended up, I was on the mound and just gave up like a grand slam and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I felt dead on the inside. Like yeah. it didn't bother me at all. I had no adrenaline. I was just like, uh, this is kind of brutal. Yeah. Um, I walked off the mound ended up going inside like I'm like I'm, I think I'm done yeah like, I don't, I don't want to play anymore so I went in called my wife told her uh, told her I was going to retire she was a little surprised you know because it was wasn't anything I had talked about up yeah. until that day and that point and um, you know, I called my parents and then the manager came in and I told the manager I said hey I'm going to shut it down and told the team and uh and the weirdest thing was, you know, like I, I said, I thought I was going to, you're going to have to rip the jersey off my back. Like yeah. I had the goal to play till I was 50. I told okay. everybody, I'm going to play till I'm 50. Um, I made it till 40, yeah. not 50. It's pretty good. I mean, we'll see. Maybe, yeah. maybe somebody yeah, will give you never me a know, chance. Man. Uh, but yeah, and then, you know, I came home and uh, I actually ended up going back to my hometown for a little bit. I played in like this men's league with my cousin. Uh, like three, my cousin was a manager. His two of his sons were playing there in college. Uh, my nephew was playing on the team, and I went back and I was like, I want to, I want to play on this team because I want to like play first base and play yeah, the outfield. Yeah, exactly. And, like, uh, things we haven't done in yeah, forever. Exactly. And they're like, oh well, you can pitch too. I was like, ah, you know, I don't really want to pitch. I pitched yeah. enough, and I did pitch a few games, uh, and it was fun. But you know, did you relieve or start? I did both. Okay. Yeah, there nice. were a couple of games where I closed, and there I, I started a few games as okay. well. Nice. Um, yeah, and we were like in the playoffs, and <laughs> I'm pitching, and I'm I'm starting, you know, and I haven't gone over three innings, yeah. in I don't know how long. So I'm in like the fifth or sixth inning, and, you know, I'm pitching well, but now it's like bases loaded, no outs, and I'm, you know, this is a playoff game. My yeah. cousin comes out like, hey, 
how you doing? I was like, oh, I'm really freaking tired, but, you know, I'll, I'll get out of this thing. Yeah. So then I struck out the three guys yeah. and, like, cut out of the inning, no yeah. runs. I was like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, but one of the main reasons I wanted to go back and play in that is because I wanted to hit a home run. Okay. Like, I yeah. hadn't hit a home run since I was in college, like, yeah. playing college summer ball and stuff like that. Um, and then, like, in BP, I'd, I'd hit them. I'd hit home runs. Uh, they'd let us take BP, but... Uh, so I played in this in this league. I end up hitting a home run. So <laughs> it was it was actually in the playoffs. It was my uncle has a field uh, in my hometown. It's called Bimal Field. Oh, cool! Um, and it's right behind the elementary school. The elementary school that I, I went to as a kid. Uh, and it, the elementary school is kind of in right field and in center. And it's it's about four hundred and twenty plus feet away from home plate. So. I take this guy deep. I freaking, I just pimp the shit out of him. Just hit it. <laughs> stare at it. Walk, walk to first base. And as I start my jog, the ball goes, like smashes a huge oh, window at the school. Oh I'm just like, that is freaking awesome. <laughs> That's uh, how I want to end. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, it was fun. I had a, had a great time. But then uh, I ended up coming back here to L.A. Uh, yeah. after that. And, you know, making my rounds at home and spending some time there and seeing my parents and family. And then I came back here and for like two months, I was just sitting on the couch and I was like, all right, what am I going to do? <laughs> like, I can't just sit on the freaking couch yeah. for the rest of my life. Um, at that time, uh, I had had a conversation with Brent Dean who he told me to tell yeah. you hello, by the yeah. way. Love that guy. Uh, yeah. One of the greatest guys I've, I've ever yeah, met but, without a doubt uh he we had talked about starting like a facility yeah um, which he caught at ucla too so he's a local guy caught at south torrance and then god he played and played pro ball for a long time yeah he a really got, good defensive catcher yeah he got signed uh by the brewers as a non-drafted free agent played with them for a while and then yeah. spent spent a few years in indie ball yep. he was in indie ball at the time uh, and we had talked and i said man like he was just a guy that I had watched play and I'd watched work out and all this stuff and never like got that opportunity. Yeah, to, like for sure. You know, because he was non-drafted. Uh, yeah, at that, at that point, you got to get some luck. Like, yeah, and you know, the organization loved him, but they would have him like mentor like their prospects. Yeah, you know, so he yeah. wasn't going anywhere. Um, but I just see, you know, as a guy, I saw him work his butt off in the off season. He'd drive down to Long Beach to train. He'd drive to ucla to like hit and then catch a few guys there and then he'd meet me up in pv uh to play catch with me and catch a bullpen so he was just all over like working hard and all over the place so i was like if i start something um start like this facility this is the guy that i want like to help me out yeah he works hard um you know i knew I that, that I, and he like I said, he never caught his break, so I thought like this would be a good way that he can, yeah. you know, stay in the game and help kids out and, and make some money, and and also do all the things that I don't want to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk to people on the phone. Yeah. I don't want to like talk to clients to get them to sign up. Yeah. I don't want to handle like the tax stuff. And I just want to be like the pitching yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. You want to help work guys out get guy better. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, uh, you know. We started uh, Bimal Elite Athletics uh, right at the end of 2017. You know, I've been doing that ever since. And I, I, you know, we were talking earlier, but since I have retired, I have literally not missed playing. It's been the that's, weirdest yeah, thing that's for myself. Crazy. Um, and it, it's really strange because I just didn't think it would be like that. Yeah. Uh, and I think a big part of it is starting the facility being around around the kids every day and having kind of that clubhouse atmosphere yeah. in there where guys are in there talking shit and you know getting on each other and working hard and to watch you know we've, we've had guys where i thought like oh, i just want to work with like pro guys or yeah. like top level like college kids and then some of the best stories and the best guys we've had in there was you know the kids that they walk in the door and you're just like <laughs> Oh my God, like, I don't know what we're going to do for yeah. this kid. Like, I just don't know how we're going to help. Yeah. Um, we had a kid, his name's JT. He went to South, South High School. And he was like one of those kids where he came in and 
we'd have him throw in front of the gun and he's throwing as hard as he can. He's throwing 55 miles an hour, you know, and he's a catcher. Oh my gosh. So he wasn't a pitcher, but he's doing like a full on running gun, like running up, throwing as hard as he can, 55, oh 52, 54. And I'm just like, Brent, like, I don't know how we're going to help him. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, so we just stuck with our plan. We did, you know, the same stuff that I do, the same, uh, you know, worked on his arm action, worked on plyo, plyo throws, uh, working out his workouts. You know, he started out, obviously, if you're throwing 55, you're not very strong. Yeah. Um, and I remember talking to him and he was like, oh, his, his main goal was he wanted to just play on the varsity team. Yeah. He wanted to play a couple games. Uh, so it wasn't like he's like, oh, I want to be a big leaguer. Yeah. It would have been like, kindly leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it's yeah. not going to happen. Uh, Save your money. But he ended up, uh, I mean, he could he could hit really well. Uh, he's always been able to hit. And I remember the one day, because, you know, he'd throw and he wasn't throwing well. And I remember seeing him. I didn't have my contacts in or glasses on. I saw this kid hitting and he's hitting really well. I walked over and it was JT. And I'm like, oh, geez. And swing it a little yeah. bit um and he ended up getting a scholarship to play college baseball and oh wow i was just like and i mean you see him now you see him throw and he's you know i think he's done pull downs over 90 miles an hour oh that's amazing now. man um so to watch that yeah and we've had a lot of those stories yeah. he's, you know for sure i know he's not them, yeah. the only one yeah. but uh, he was the first one yeah so you know he's always had like he's kind of been our our mascot he's you know yeah we wanted to make shirts shirts of him because he <laughs> inspired everybody that was in there because yeah they got to watch you know the success that he had and and the, i mean he just he showed up every day he yeah. worked really hard yep and you know that's that's all it takes sometimes all the things that make people successful right this exactly. game, i mean this game is a skill sport you have to put the time in and if you do it can happen yeah no yeah. doubt and i just remember you know seeing that seeing his success and then him get a chance to go up and play college baseball uh that was awesome and i was like yeah, yeah i don't that's... i don't even really like working with pro guys <laughs> anymore because you know they they always want the most of your time and the and most the, attention and for they give the you least the least amount of money. i know god <laughs> it's just like oh my god and i've had this conversation with a bunch of different people that own facilities too yeah. where they're just like yeah like pro guy will call me tell me he wants me to come to this field and like take video of him. Yeah. It's like, what? I have a job, man. I yeah, can't just I leave know. and follow you around and you're not even paying me anything. Yeah, exactly. Like, what are you talking about? I'm not about? your videographer. Like, go yes. hire somebody. So, like I said, I think that's one of the main reasons, um, just having that, yeah. that I haven't missed the game. Yeah. Um, but then, like we talked, you know, I started kind of doing our program and um, a couple months ago, I was you know, up to where I was basically 93 to 95, I was averaging like 93.5 yeah. thrown against hitters. Um, and I was just like, man, should I try and play again? Like, <laughs> you know, I, I don't miss it, but at the same time, like, why am I, what am I even doing this yeah. for? If, yeah, exactly. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm, I feel like I'm just wasting it. If I got this newfound skill and a newfound velocity and I'm, you know, just hanging out at the house. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm 40, 44 tomorrow. Yeah. And I can still hit 95, but I mean, why? You know? <laughs> so I actually uh, called uh, an old friend. Well, Russell Martin's been a good friend of mine since we played with the Dodgers. And uh, I got to know his agent over the years. Uh, so I ended up calling him and said, hey, man, I've got this crazy idea. Like, if I was, you know, thinking about playing, like I sent him all my Rapsodo data and all this stuff. Yeah. And I said, you know, what do you think? Like, do you think it's a possibility? He's like, yeah, man, this could be like a, this could be really fun if somebody gives you an opportunity. Yeah. And uh, he's been talking to a few teams uh, for me. I he ended up having the Braves come uh, to our facility in Torrance, and I, I threw for them probably like two or three weeks ago. And threw well, but yeah. you, know, you know, like I said earlier, I uh, the velo wasn't wasn't as high as it has been. And uh, difference too is we have a dirt mound in Texas, and okay. that's where I was throwing yep. the most. 
Um, and that's, you know, obviously it's different when yep. you're on the dirt yep, for than sure. when you're on an indoor mount. So the one here in LA, it's an indoor mount. It's a good indoor mount, but it's just, you know, it's obviously not the same. Um, you know, with, you don't have the cleats, you don't Yeah, get that, no, it's you know, not, it's I, yeah. completely different. Uh, but I was, you know, I was still like 90 to 93. I think I maybe hit 94 once, maybe like 93.8 or something yeah. like that. Uh, which I always tell the kids we don't round up. <laughs> Uh, but I round myself <laughs> up. To, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 forty-four years old, round up to ninety-four. That's yeah. freaking great. Uh, so I haven't heard back from them. And then you know, talking with uh, my agent, he was going to set some things up in Arizona for me to go, maybe throw for more than one yeah. team. Uh, but we'll we'll see. What we're, happens. Yeah, we're in April too. It's still early. Guys will get hurt. Guys yeah, exactly. will yeah, move around. And, and then we've got this thing coming up where uh, the Israel Olympic team. Um, we're going to put a team together from all of the guys who like train in our facility. So we've got a bunch of guys in Texas that, uh, their seasons got banged. So, yeah. uh, they didn't play at all this year and that will give them, you know, some of these college guys an opportunity to go face some pretty high level, uh, players. Yeah. Which Obviously is great. The, yeah. they're, the Olympic team's pretty good. Yep. A couple guys will come in and, and train here in Torrance, uh, take live at bats and um zach weiss actually is on the team as well he'll come in and throw yep. and, uh, so we're going to put together a team to face them i think next month so okay. i'll definitely go throwing yeah that. i was about to say you got to uh, and I have a few scouts there and then you know like i said just see what see, happens yeah i'm not you know dude you're in a no-lose situation exactly i mean right it's... exactly and like i said if i go and pitch for a month and i'm just not feeling it and then i just come home and do yeah do what I, i've yeah. been doing the whole time but uh, i think it could be pretty cool to you know possibly make a comeback at 44 yeah be and sweet throw at a high level and just see what happens because i don't know what you know i don't know if i'd be able to hold up for the whole year the whole season i don't know how much i'd be able to pitch yeah but i'm willing to find out yeah you know if someone will give me that opportunity so We'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. It's good stuff, man. Yeah, I love it. I love that you're still throwing. I mean, it's it's impressive. It's and I think it's also the the discipline to train. Like that's the one thing I haven't missed much is you know getting the body ready is was you know by the end got brutal. So I'm I'm impressed that you still have that. Yeah, I just I found like some different recovery methods that I've been using. Uh, it's kind of a combination of a lot of things that I've done over the years. You yeah, know? and like I said earlier, just trying to to come up with the best program for our athletes yeah. and help them to get better. You know, it's obviously made me better because yeah, I'm sure. experimenting yeah, and I'm, I'm working on different things, trying out different things. And I was, I was always like that in my career because yeah. I wanted to play till I was 50. And, yeah. You know, if you have a goal like that, you've got to do something different. You than better evolve. Else. Yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Uh, so, you know, I started doing like Wim Hof, the Wim okay. Hof method. Yeah, the breathing stuff. Yeah. So doing the breathing. Uh, doing, I take an ice bath every single morning. Yeah, uh, I've seen that on Instagram. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, it's it it's different. Yeah, uh, but it's one of those things where if you sit in thirty five degree water first thing in the morning, there's not a whole lot that's going to happen in that day that's going to be worse than yeah, that. Yeah, that's you know, a good you're going to be able to handle pretty much anything. <laughs> uh, but I, I, you know, I started doing doing that and just saw one. I started losing like weight where it wasn't like I was trying to lose weight. But over the years, I've experimented like with my weight, like getting up to 250 pounds. Yeah. Um, I've gone down to like 215, and I've been everywhere in between just yeah. trying to find like the perfect weight for myself. Because, you know, you always hear that mass equals gas. Yeah, and that's yeah. not necessarily true. Like if you're big and you can't move the weight, yeah. and you can't, your body doesn't move well at a certain weight, then there's no point of being that big. And, uh, that's kind of how I was when I got up to 250, and I've kind of found through doing all this that when I'm like around 220-ish, maybe a little less than 220, that's when I've always like thrown my hardest. Okay. Um, so when I, once I started doing like this Wim Hof stuff, like I started losing like a ton of weight. I was like, what's going on? Like why? You know, I, obviously I'm shivering like hell in the cold, <laughs> you know, the cold water. So maybe that's like burning yeah, a ton be. of calories, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, so that happened. I ended up getting to like 
220, 216 is kind of where I'm at right now. Nice. And just moving better. Yeah, for moving sure. Moving more efficiently. Yeah, understanding uh, what you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Body doesn't hurt. Like yeah. Knees that's don't great. hurt. Shoulders don't hurt. Um, yeah, so I started doing that, and then I've just doing like red light therapy so stand in front of a a red light it's this panel of just like red led lights and then they've got like near infrared lights on it and basically just stand there completely naked just like (laughs) in front of this light lock the doors you know in the gym we have like a recovery room locks on both doors so guys we've had guys start doing that where they're you know it's good for recovery okay it's big can apparently boost your yeah, testosterone say, what does it do? by that, like 300 yeah. percent oh interesting um they've done they there are a ton of like clinical trials with like red light therapy okay uh, you can look it up but i saw one obviously that uh, piqued my interest was they did like a randomized controlled trial where they took you know 100 people they did a workout they took another 100 people who would do red light and then do the workout and the people who did red light and the workout got 50 percent stronger so 50 yeah. percent yeah is a that's lot. a lot yeah i was expecting like five yeah and yeah that's, exactly. that's a lot but 50 i was like what 50 percent stronger and their muscles were 50 percent thicker wow from doing the red light dude that's great it was a big it was a pretty big sample size too yeah so, I was like, oh, well, yeah. we're getting one of those. Yeah, I was about to say, we're give that a shot. That yeah. 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 So, you know, it's always just kind of trying to stay on that cutting edge of, yeah, you, have to. you know, data, training, recovery. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of it's good. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of it can be overused when it comes to like the data and analytical stuff like that. But it's one of those things in the game right now where if you're not using it, then you're falling behind. Yep. And, you know, the game's going to move on without you. And I love the old school approach uh, to a certain extent. You know, you, we do, we are a little shocked sometimes by coaches and like college coaches where they're still doing the same stuff they did back in the 1980s. Yeah. Uh, when they coached, when they first started coaching and their team's still running, you know, a three mile jog every day before practice and yeah. you know their kids kids will train with us and they'll put on weight and be strong velo be up feeling good and then they'll come back after the season and they will have lost like 30 pounds yeah that's crazy and they're just little twigs and we're like what is going on yeah like oh well, we run three miles every day i'm like oh my gosh <laughs> And now and then they get on the mound and they're throwing 80. Yeah, exactly. Like, You're like, oh, all the games, all they're that, gone. All of that hard work. Yeah, out the yeah. window. So, oh, gosh. Well, good stuff. Yeah. Well, so we, we finish with, like, a funny story from your playing days, if you can think of one. Um, could be big league days, could be minor league days, college. It really doesn't matter. But, yeah, something, if you have any good stories from. You know, I'll tell, yeah, I'll tell this one because I was just telling it the other day. Okay. So it's fresh in my mind. Beautiful. Um, First day I moved to Playa del Rey. All okay. Right, so my, my still with third the Dodgers. Year with the Dodgers. Okay, yeah. So uh, I'm sure you remember uh, 2008. We played a game at the Coliseum. Oh yeah, yeah. So I do. Yeah. we played the Red Sox. Yep. There were like 120,000 people in yep, the stands. Yep. It was freaking nuts. So it's that day. Uh, I'm at my apartment. I'm about to go to the field and. Uh, at the little breaker condos or whatever there's like a little elevator that went down into the garage where everybody parked so i hit the button i'm waiting for the for the elevator and all of a sudden it comes up and this big freaking dude gets off the elevator like has a duck out from underneath and it's kareem abdul jabbar <laughs> oh my right? gosh so he lives like a couple doors down from me i didn't yeah. know uh so i look at him and he he like looks at me i was like hey man how's it going he just like looks at me doesn't say a word and walks away yeah. and i was like what <laughs> like how hard is it to say hello <laughs> you know right. it, was, it was really strange so i drive to the field whatever we're at the coliseum and lo and behold joe tory starts walking around and he's got this big dude with him introducing him and it's kareem <laughs> all right so he's in the locker room yeah 
So I start telling the guys, you know, around my locker, like, hey, like this guy big leagued me <laughs> like a couple hours ago. Like you didn't even say hi. Yeah. So uh, I said, you know what? I'm going to go freaking say something. Yeah. I'm going to go call him out on yeah. that. So I walk over and, and Joe's like, hey, Kareem, this is one of our pitchers, Joe Bimel. And I go, oh, yeah, Kareem, how's it going, man? We, we met earlier today. He's like, oh, we did? Where? I said, uh, I'm your next door neighbor. He's like, where at? I said, what do you mean, where at? Like, at the Brickers. Yeah. Like, you know exactly where at. I said, remember, I saw you getting off the elevator today. And he goes, oh. I said, yeah. Freaking big league me. And he's like, man, small world, huh? I was like, yeah, very small world. And then from that point on, every time he saw me, he made it a point to like go out of his way to like, hey man, how's it going? How's the team That's doing? That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it ended up being a pretty funny story. Yeah, it's like, hilarious. Ended up being like a good dude. And, yeah. But you know, I obviously I know he probably gets like some weird, weird people that har- harass him and yeah, and wear him things. out. But at the same time, man, it's yeah, simple. Hello. Honestly, it's Couldn't not that you. hard. Yeah. yeah, it's not that hard to say hello yeah. when someone says it to you yeah exactly especially in your building yes <laughs> you're gonna see <laughs> yeah exactly. pretty much every day so it's like the seinfeld episode yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah well good stuff dude well, i appreciate it man thanks yeah, for coming thanks out for having yeah, me. it's awesome yeah once i saw it on instagram i was like i I kind of invited myself, you know. I was like, "You're gonna hey, get I want, an invite." I want to be on that. Yeah, that dude, dude you're getting an sweet. invite as soon as you're in the area. <laughs> I just know how busy you are with Texas building that thing out there too. So. Yeah, yeah, that's and, been fun. And dude, buy more elite athletics for people in the area. We have a lot of people in the area that listen, which is cool. Yeah, it's. I mean, I've seen it myself with my own players. So you know, check it out if you're a, an aspiring ball player. Definitely yeah, worth your time. A couple of your guys were. I told them I was going to be on this. Uh, yesterday. Oh, cool. Uh, Bakura yeah. and Alex Rome. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great like, kids. You are. That's so cool. Yeah, they're great yeah, kids. Yeah. yeah. Get no better. Yeah, you got some good good guys on that yeah. team. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, All right, brother. man. Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for having me, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. All right. Cheers. <laughs>